Welcome back to Public Affairs on Peach. I'm Karen Greer. We're going to switch gears right now because March is colorectal cancer month. While it's the fourth most common cancer diagnosed, only lung cancer is more deadly. And joining me now is colorectal cancer survivor Michelle Perez from Kennesaw and her 16 year old daughter, Sydney. Thank you so much for joining us, both of you. Thank you for having us. Uh, you were diagnosed two years ago. Michelle, can you tell me how you knew? I just felt like I had the stomach flu that wouldn't really go away. So I had gone to the doctor and he suggested I have an endoscopy and a colonoscopy. I was 48 years old. And I remember telling him when I went in for my procedure, hey, just remember, if you don't find anything, I don't have to pay anything, it's free. Right. <laughs> and I remember waking up from the surgery and him telling me that, from the procedure and him telling me that, I'm sorry to tell you, but you have colon cancer. And I looked at him and I said, I'm too young. They're, are you sure you're not talking to the person who's in the 70 year old lady next to me? And he's like, I'm sorry. I'm, you have colon cancer. No real symptoms other than like a bug. Just like a bug that wouldn't go away. It never progressed any worse or better. I just felt like, it, like I, I never fully felt like myself. And any family history that you know of? None. Wow. So Michelle, what, or Michelle, Sydney, what do you remember of mom being sick? Um, it's kind of a blur. Yeah, I, like, I just remember, like, I don't know. She never really was down and out for a while, was she? I was never no. down and out at all. Yeah. I just never, didn't feel like myself for, bef before I had the testing. And then we got diagnosed and we were happened to be going on vacation two days later. Wow. So we went away and had some family time and um, enjoyed our time before, uh, wow. before the demise started. <laughs> were you, once you got that diagnosis, were you nervous, afraid? very afraid. I thought that it could never happen to me and it, I did not want to be a member of the club. So now you are a big advocate for screening. A big screening. advocate. Um, yes. In fact, what happened with me was after I was diagnosed and um, everyone that I knew that was my age and 50 and was supposed to be screened for colon cancer, everyone at my job went out and, and got their oh, testing wow. because they were afraid. Because so, it could never happen to you. And so many people are afraid of what the screening is and the process. Tell folks at home, it's not as bad as you think. It's not. It's totally the best sleep that you're ever going to have. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best sleep because I never really sleep. Well, I woke up and I couldn't believe it was over. Yes. Yes. So, and it's painless. You go back to eating the next day, fine, and you would never know that you even had the test. I will say the most, what, what I didn't like was the drinking the liquid before. So here's a little tip. Uh oh. <laughs> there's, a, there's a prep that's smaller. If you ask the doctor, because I cannot drink a lot of yes. liquids or eat a lot of foods, so it's actually half the size of the regular prep. So you can drink less, have the same results, and wake up fine. And now that's been two years now, so what are doctors saying about you? How are you doing? Uh, everything knock wood, so far so good. <laughs> um, I'm still really tired because of some residual effects. I'm not able to eat as, there's a lot of things that happened to me after my surgery. Um, so I'm not allowed to eat or drink, or I can't eat or drink like a normal person can. So unfortunately, um, I'm very tired. I just recently had an iron infusion to help my numbers, oh. um, but I'm here. I'm supposed to be here. Do you worry for Sydney? Um, I worry for her, but I, unfortunately, she, um, she grew up really fast, and she learned some lessons. And the good news is, is that we did have genetic counseling after I, my diagnosis, Wonderful. and it is not, we don't have any markers for it. Wonderful. And for her, she knows that she, because it does now run in our family, she needs to get screened earlier. Mm -hmm. And talk about something that you guys are able, able to do together, which we showed a picture of, Relay for Life. Yes, Relay for Life is awesome. We had such a great time being, <laughs> having that, that first experience and that survivor, I just lost it. I just couldn't stop crying because um, it was, to, again, you're in this club that you don't necessarily want to be in, but you are so amazed of the support and my family and my friends, and I couldn't have done this without them. What was it like for you doing this big deal with mom? Um, it, it was so important to me because you, like I was able to see her like fight a battle and come out better on the other side and to celebrate that was really exciting and we just keep adding like 
I don't know, we just keep doing more for like cancer and Relay for Life and stuff like that. And we want it to go away and that's why we fight. Well, it's coming up. Big Relay for Life, Comp County is when? It is March, May I'm sorry, 3rd. May 3rd <laughs> at Jim Miller Park. Um, be there, be square. <laughs> um, we actually, what City did for her 16th birthday is she asked people to donate to her Relay for Life page. And um, instead of taking uh, presents. presents, she asked for people for donations. Love to see the two of you together. Great job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And don't go anywhere. We're going to learn more about the importance of colorectal cancer screenings right after the break.